Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be having a look at how we can solve some more complicated trig equations. And you may notice one thing about these equations, namely the inside of our functions right here, the argument of our function. Because we no longer have a single angle in here, we might have some kind of scalar in here as well, maybe a little shift as we'll see in the later example. But the thing with these equations is that we're no longer working with, say, the sine of some angle. We have some more stuff we need to deal with in here. So we're still given an equation to solve and also a domain to work in. So how exactly can we deal with this thing right here? Well, the thing is we all know how to solve equations with, let's say the sine of just the angle itself. That's just easy. We just think about our unit circle and see which points match up. So wouldn't it be nice if we can kind of transform this one half theta in here into just a single angle? Because that way it's a bit more easier for us to think about. So to do that, why not use a little substitution? So why not let some new angle, I don't know, T be equal to one half theta. You can get creative with what your new angle is. It can be a T, a K, a banana, a dog. It really doesn't matter. We just want to replace the argument of our sign here with something new. So if we do this substitution right here, we're going to get two sine of T because we're replacing a half theta with T minus one being equal to zero. And notice one thing right here. In the original question, we were solving for theta being between zero and two pi. But if you look here, we're no longer working with thetas anymore. We're working with t's. So that means we have to change our domain a little bit to match up with the t's. So how exactly can we do that? Well, we know where our theta starts and where it ends. And all we really need to do is substitute these endpoints right here into our substitution to get our new endpoints for our t. So if we do that, let's plug zero, the starting point into this theta right here. We're gonna get one half of zero, which is zero. So our t is also gonna start at zero. And if we plug two pi into this theta right here, we're gonna get a half of two pi, which is just pi. So our t, the endpoint of our t is just pi. So you see we've changed our domain from thetas to t's and now we can go ahead and solve this as per usual. So just moving this one onto the other side we're going to get positive one right here dividing both sides by two we're going to get sine of t being equal to a half and right here since we only have a single angle in here we can think about our unit circle and remember sine is all the y value so we're looking for all the points on our unit circle with a y value of a half and remember our domain is from zero to pi so we're only working in this range right here zero to pi so where are our two points or our two solutions it's right here and it's right here and if you refer to your exact values table, we can quite easily figure out that in the first quadrant, this angle right here, this angle T, it's going to be pi over six because the sine of pi over six is just a half. And just by doing some symmetry, you can argue that this angle on the second quadrant is the same thing. So we also have a T right here. So we need to calculate the angle from the positive X axis all the way over to there. So how exactly can we do that? Well, we can think about walking pi radians and then just walking back by pi on six so our t is also equal to pi and then we walk backwards by pi on six and that's going to give us five pi over six so you see we have our two solutions for t right here but notice that these are only the solutions for this equation right here but we want solutions for our original equation so how can we do that well the nice thing is we already know that there's two solutions for t and to get back to solutions in terms of theta because our original question was in theta all we really need to do is utilize the substitution again a little bit so if we rearrange this equation a little bit we're going to get theta being equal to 2t so just multiplying 2 on both sides so to convert from t's back to theta's all we need to do is plug these solutions right here into this equation so if we do that let's plug pi and 6 into here so 2 times pi and 6 that's pi and 3 so one of our solutions for theta is pi and 3 and another value of theta we can get plugging this into here we're going to get 5 pi over 3 so another solution is 5 pi over 3 and there you go those are our two solutions for our original equation and also notice one nice thing right here imagine our unit circle our original domain was from 0 all the way to 2 pi and notice that these two angles right here they both lie in our domain so 5 pi and 3 but well, this is 
3 pine 3, 4 pine 3, 5 pine 3. So both of our solutions do indeed lie inside of our original domain. And to really make sure that you do get solutions in your original domain, it's very important to change your domain when you do the substitution right here. Because if you don't change the domain, then you're gonna either miss out on solutions or pick up more solutions than you need. So always when you do a substitution, change your domain to make sure that you get the right number of solutions. All right, so for the next example, we have something a little more messed up inside of our cosine right here, because not only do we have a dilation factor in here, we also have a little shift in here. So same deal as before, we know how to work with only one angle in here. So why not just right away do a substitution? So we're going to let some new angle, let's call it alpha this time, be equal to two theta plus pi and four. And if we rewrite this equation a little bit, we're going to get cosine of all of this junk, which is now alpha being equal to one. And remember, don't forget to change the domain because we did this substitution right here. So to figure out where theta starts and where it ends, all we need to do is substitute these endpoints into this equation right here. So plugging negative pi into this theta right here, we're gonna get negative pi plus another pi and four, which is negative three pi and four. And then we have to multiply by this two right here. So we're gonna get negative three pi over two. And then plugging this pi into here, we're gonna get pi plus another quarter pi, which is five pi and four. And multiplying it by two, we're going to get five pi over two. So this is the domain we're working in for alpha right here. So back to this equation right here, we're solving for where cosine of alpha equals one. So if we draw our unit circle right here, remember what cosine represents on our unit circle, it represents all the x values. So pretty much we're looking for all the points on our circle right here that have an x value of one. And the only place where that happens is right over here. So we know the point where our solutions exist. Now we just have to look on our domain. Well, we start at negative three pi over two. So if we walk backwards, we're gonna get negative pi and two, negative pi negative three pi on two, which is right here. So we're gonna start here, we're gonna go all the way around, and then we're gonna pick up one solution right here. And then now we have to walk to five pi on two. Where exactly is that? Well, we're gonna walk one pi on two, two pi on two, three pi on two, four pi on two. We're gonna pick up another solution right here. Then we're finally gonna end up five pi on two. So even though we only have one point on our unit circle where the, where the x value is one, we actually pick up two solutions right here because we're kind of walking around the circle twice. We're making two laps around it. So now we just have to figure out where these two points are right here. Well, notice for the first lap right here, this point here happens where alpha equals to zero because we started at negative three pi on two and then we walked all the way down to zero. And then for our second lap, well, we're gonna go two pi around, and then we're gonna pick up another solution. So alpha also equals to two pi, because after we walked two pi around, our x value lands on one. So these are our two solutions. And now we have to go back to our theta somehow. So again, we have to utilize our substitution. So why not rearrange things a little bit? Well, if we re rearrange this, we're going to get, well, dividing both sides by two, we're gonna get alpha over two, and then we subtract pi and four on both sides. So we're gonna get alpha, over two minus pi over four being equal to theta. And I'm actually gonna advance this fraction by two over two to get a four in the denominator. And the reason for doing that is so we can combine these two fractions right here. That's just to make things a little bit easier for us. So as for our first solution for alpha, we have alpha being equal to zero. So plugging zero into here, we're just gonna get negative pi and four. So theta, one of our solutions is negative pi over four. Then plugging two pi, our second solution into here, we're gonna get four pi minus pi, which is three pi. And then three pi divided by four, we're gonna get theta also being equal to three pi over four. And these are our two final solutions for theta right here. And notice that again, these two angles do indeed lie inside of our domain for theta. So we hope that pretty much wraps it up for today's video on solving some more complex trig functions with weird stuff inside of our functions right here. So whenever you're solving a trig equation and you're presented with some weird junk inside of our functions right here, just use a nice little substitution where you let some new angle being equal to this whole entire inside right here. And then you're gonna get out a new equation with only one angle inside. And we all know how to solve those equations quite easily. 
And one of the most important things is changing our domain because in our new equations, we're no longer working with our original angle anymore. So we have to change our domain to compensate for that. And then once you've gotten your solutions in terms of the new angle, all you need to do is use your original substitution, rearrange it a bit to get theta by itself. And then you can substitute your solutions into here to get your final answer. So that's pretty much the process I use whenever I solve these equations. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see everyone next time.